All right, so today um, we are taking notes on chapter 11, section 3, which is um, different types of other patterns of inheritance. All right, so there's always exceptions to the rule, um, specifically when we were talking about Gregor Mendel's three laws. There are rule, there's exceptions to those laws. And sometimes alleles are neither dominant or recessive. They potentially could be both dominant or both express equally. So, um, sometimes genes can exist in many different forms and have many different alleles to code for one specific gene. Also, many traits can also um, interact with different genes together and have many genes coding for one type of trait. So we're going to talk about um, four different patterns of inheritance. So the first one is called incomplete dominance. And with incomplete dominance, we are talking about where one allele is not completely dominant over the other. And so you're looking at a heterozygous phenotype. So you're looking at two different alleles together. So like a big T and a little t, or a big R, um, or, or, an, or like a, and a W together. So they lie in between two homologous phenotypes, same phenotypes. So right now I want you to pause the video and draw a Punnett square box. Okay, now that you've drawn your Punnett square, we're going to solve this problem. We're looking at um, carnations, they're flowers. And we're going to cross a red flower and a white flower. They are incomplete dominants of each other. So put the R parent, the male on the top for the red carnation, and we'll put the white carnation, the female, on the bottom. And so fill out the Punnett square now. So what you're noticing is you're, you're getting a heterozygous phenotypes, heterozygous, two different alleles, okay? Now what you're going to see when you cross a red and white is you're going to see pink. You're going to see pink. And I want you to write this word down, blend. Incomplete dominance is a blend phenotype where you will see both kind of um, a blend where you neither one will be dominant when you have them cross together. So that is the set, that is the first type of other pattern of inheritance that's not quite um, law of dominant like Gregor Mendel did. So we have our second um, pattern of inheritance, which is called codominance. Right, so codominance is when the phenotypes produced by both alleles are clearly expressed. So you might have a dominant and a recessive allele, and both of those traits will show up in the phenotype. So let's pause and make a Punnett square. All right, good. So in this example, we have red color that is co-dominant with the white color. So if you have a red horse, we'll make that the male. We have two alleles that code for the red gene, and then you cross it with a white horse, which have white alleles. And if we fill in that Punnett square, we get heterozygous for the alleles, so different alleles. We get the red and the white. Instead of one dominating over the other, they both show up. And so what you end up getting is a speckled or spotted horse. So it has both the red and the white mixed in. So for the phenotype, you will see both. Not one is dominating over the other. They both are expressed. Okay. All right. So the third other pattern of inheritance is called multiple alleles. And so basically, we've been talking about how we've had one gene, okay, that has two alleles. Well, in this situation, when you have two or more alleles, we call that multiple alleles um, inheritance. So the, um, the example that we're going to give you is blood typing. So human genes that code for blood type. And the different alleles we have is A, okay, A, B, or O. These are three alleles. So far, you've only been talking about two alleles, like for height, 
you'd have um, a big T and a little t. Those are just two alleles. In multiple alleles, we are talking about two or more. So there are three alleles in a multiple allele situation. And so these are the, you get more different potential combinations of offspring when you have multiple alleles. Okay, so when you have three or more alleles, we, it's said to be multiple. And these are just different pictures of the different blood type possibilities that could happen when you have um, a multiple allele inheritance pattern. Okay. All right, so the next pattern of an inheritance is sex link. And that means that the genes are located on the X chromosome only. So these alleles are only found on the X chromosome. For example, color blindness blindness. So it's important when we're writing out sex-linked patterns of inheritance, we are writing the chromosome and then the allele next to it. So for instance, um, in a female, you would show two X chromosomes because females have two X chromosomes. And for a male, you would write an X and a Y because a male has a Y chromosome and an X chromosome. So that's important to note that that is not the allele. That is the chromosome. And then we add in the allele that is linked to the chromosome. So for instance, uh, in color blindness, it is represented by the letter C. So the dominant allele, big C, means that it um, produces a normal female, not colorblind. A female can also carry the colorblind gene in a heterozygous allele pattern. So it'll have a big C and a little c. Or a female could be colorblind. In order to be colorblind, though, you have to be recessive for both alleles. So the recessive little c is linked to both X chromosomes. So, and then in males, remember, this is linked to only the X chromosome. So you will not find an allele on the Y chromosome. So a normal male who isn't colorblind will have a dominant C, big C, on his X chromosome, and then nothing on the Y because it is linked to the X. And then a colorblind male will have the recessive allele on the X chromosome. Perfect. So for instance, you can take this little test right now. If you can see the numbers inside the circles of uh, the circle with all the dots in it, you are not colorblind. And if you cannot see the numbers, you might be colorblind. All right, so let's take a moment. Let's pause the video and make a Punnett square. We're going to practice this. All right, so we have a male who is colorblind, and he's crossed with a female who is just a carrier for colorblindness but is not colorblind at all. So she carries a recessive allele, but she also has a dominant allele that does not show colorblindness in her phenotype. So we want to know what is the probability, if they were to mate, what is the probability that their offspring will be colorblind? So let's make sure that we write our X and Y chromosomes. So the male has an X and Y, the female has two Xs, and then let's write the alleles on the chromosomes. So the male is colorblind, so that means that he has the recessive allele on his X chromosome, and the female is not colorblind. So she has one dominant allele and one recessive allele. So she carries the colorblindness, but she does not have colorblindness. So then they mate, and then let's fill in the Punnett square. And remember to write in the chromosomes, because we're talking about X-linked, sex-linked. And just like the alleles, the chromosome comes down into this box as well. So this shows, if you're to think about it, that you have a 50-50 chance of it being a boy or a girl. And then this shows you what you have for possibilities of colorblindness. So the f if you are born female from this, you have a 50-50 chance of being colorblind. And then if you are male, you also have a 50-50 chance of being colorblind. Notice how the uh, dominant and recessive alleles are carried into the offspring. All right, so the final and um, different type of patterns is called polygenic traits. Now, poly in your root words means many. And gen genetic, polygenic, genic is referring to many 
genes. And so a polygenic trait is, con is referring to when you have two or more genes contributing to a trait, okay? Two or more genes contributing to a trait. So many genes, polygenic, many genes. So with polygenic traits, there is a huge wide range of different phenotypes, physical characteristics you see. The example uh, we have is eye color. Eye color has many different genes. Now you have only been talking about one type of gene. Uh, color blindness is one gene, and um, blood type is one gene and tall, and green plants, and yellow plants. That's one type of gene. But polygenic is referring to two or more genes, many genes. And eye color has multiple genes. And look at this huge code. This is the genotypes that codes for eye color. There are multiple genes that contribute to eye color. Another, um, so here's a picture of the different types of eye colors you can see. Another example of polygenic could be height in females, color of your skin, weight, intelligence. Those are also types of traits, characteristics of an individual that many genes contribute to that trait. Okay. All right. So the environment can also affect how genes are expressed. So environment conditions can affect gene expression and influence genetically determined traits. So depending on certain environmental conditions, it will affect how the plant or person or animal will look. And you typically find this in plants. Uh, an individual's phenotype can be determined by its environment as well as its genes. For example, white butterflies have white wings when they are hatched in summer, but they are darker wings when they're hatched in the spring. So why is that? All right, and it has to do with the temperature. So that is an environmental factor that affects gene expression. So in spring, it's um, a little colder, and in summer, it's a little warmer. So that affects how the gene is um, expressed. So the dark wing color helps increase their body heat. Um, another example is the Arctic fox. And they have a brown summer coat and a white winter coat. And if you should infer why that is, it's warmer in the summer, colder in the winter, and it help, and the temperature um, affects what genes is expressed. Another example are hydrangeas, which is a flower that you've probably maybe seen in your yard or other people's yards. If you plant the flower in soil that is acidic, so it has a low pH, it produces more of a blue color. And if you plant it in a basic soil, so the pH is higher, you uh, will see a pink flower. Okay, so that is the um, um, all of 11.3. So there are two questions you must answer on the form. So you must go to Class Jump and fill out the form. It looks like a paper format, your name section, and then these questions answered. So question number one, what is the type of inheritance when you have more than two alleles in one gene? Incomplete dominance, co-dominance, multiple allele, or polygenic traits? So make sure you put that question answer in the form. Question number two, can you contrast incomplete and co-dominance inheritance? So what is the difference between incomplete and co-dominance inheritance? You need to type those answers in the form. When you are finished, please make sure you do fill in the comments if you have a comment or another question or you want more um, clarification when you come back to class tomorrow, please make sure you fill that out. All right, thank you very much.